I had been thinking about segmented bowls. Frank Howarth did a video where he inlaid an odd-shaped piece into a segmented bowl to sort of break up the geometric pattern. Having done the sponge bowl, I realized that you could do a whole bowl out of odd-shaped pieces that don't have to fit perfectly together and just fill in around it with epoxy. So the result sort of reminds me of a rock wall. The first step is to make an inner mold. and I'm just using 2 by lumber and I've glued up. The outside of this shape is going to be the inside of the bowl, roughly. So the curve of this shape needs to be pretty close to what you want the curve of the actual bowl to be. Then I cover it with small pieces of self-adhesive paper. Um, they're small pieces just to keep the creases to a minimum. And I drew all the shapes on the paper, trying to keep them all roughly the same size. And I labeled all of the connections between each shape, which was overkill. I realized as I was cutting them out that I could just label each piece and then label that spot on the mold and the outline of the knife lines would show where the piece went. So I didn't really have to do all that labeling. Then I taped those onto sheets of paper, scanned that, and then enlarged it by 15%. The enlargement is because the pieces are going to be cut at an angle to better fit around the curve of the bowl. And through trial and error I figured out that that best angle for that was going to be 10 degrees. It looked like on the bottom of the bowl that 5 degrees would work better, but in practice I ended up doing almost all of it at 10 degrees. I did the cutting on the scroll saw. There aren't any internal cuts, so you could use a bandsaw. It's just easier to cut tighter curves on the scroll saw, and the cut quality is better. Like with any puzzle, you start with the edges. I'm using hot glue to attach the pieces to the inner form, and the spindle sander is really essential here, both for sort of shaping the inside of the piece to fit the curve of the mold better, and also for doing some additional shaping of the edges of the piece to get them to fit together. The big question I had about the process was how far do I go applying these before I start pouring epoxy on. I did sort of the vertical part of the bowl and stopped there. I figured I could pour the epoxy more easily with it being open around the top of it. Though I knew even having gone that far that there were going to be there were going to be places that I wasn't going to be able to get the epoxy in from the top. So the plan was to not use an outer mold, but to just tape around all the seams. And I don't know what possessed me to try painter's tape for this. I've used it with success for filling small defects in wood with epoxy in the past. But on this scale, it just did not work at all. It leaked everywhere. So I pretty much spent an hour scraping up epoxy that had dripped out and putting it back in the top where it would drip out again until it set up enough that it was going slow enough that basically it waited until I went out of the room to leak out. I waited a few hours for the epoxy to pretty much set up and I did a little bit more taping and I figured at that point it was hopefully blocked up enough at the bottom that I could just do another pour without waiting for the whole thing to fully cure. So I let that cure and then I sanded it off at the edge sander and cut it a little bit more round, taking off the high spots. And you can see it, it filled in some of it and in other areas it just didn't fill at all. Though from the top you can see it's pretty much filled in up there in behind the pieces. So I cut out the rest of the pieces and then I retaped the bottom, this time with packing tape, which worked much better. Though it got to a point where the epoxy was starting to get in between the tape and the pieces. So the more I added, it was just pushing out the tape more. So again I stopped, let it set up for a few hours, and then added some more again. There were still a bunch of pretty significant voids at this point. So I made a stand that would 
sort of support the bowl almost vertically. And I would fill in the void and then just tape over that. And that let me address all of the voids in one shot. So after five epoxy pours now, it's finally ready to go back on the lathe. And yes, I'm wearing gloves here. When you're going through the part where the epoxy is just sticking out, and it comes off in little chunks, that stuff hurts. Once you get past that into the actual bowl, you're okay. You can see I still have quite a few small voids, and I spent a lot of time trying to find a way to do that that works. And I really can't tell you that there is one. Once the holes get down to about an eighth of an inch, or three millimeters or so, it's very hard to get them filled. Even with gravity on your side, the epoxy just does not want to go in there. And it's very frustrating to have a hole that looks like it's covered, and then you sand the epoxy off, and the hole is still there. It feels like you aren't really making any progress, though you are. So after two more pours, so that's seven total now, I had a waste block added on the bottom and trued that up so I could turn it around and start working on the inside. On the outside, I had used the Easy Wood Tools finisher. And I did get some tear out in the epoxy with that, though not, not too bad. I also got some on the inside with the bowl gouge. I'm going to assume that is just due to my skill level both using it and sharpening it. It wasn't a whole lot of fun dealing with the epoxy on the outside, but it is fun working on that on the inside with the bowl gouge. At least up to the point where you start hitting the epoxy and you're in pain again. I didn't want to wear the gloves this time, so what I ended up doing was just putting some tape on my finger in the side of my hand, and that helped a lot. I figured if the tape got caught, it would just rip. I'm by no means an expert turner, and you don't have to be to do this project. You don't have to be to do turning. It's just a question of how much time you're going to have to spend sanding to fix it. And I spent a lot of time sanding. This was by far my worst attempt at filling voids. They all leaked. Though I did get it to the point where it was just sort of a few areas that I had to address. And they were sort of in line with each other. So one on the inside at the bottom would have one on the outside at the top. So I could just concentrate on just those. At the end, I was just mixing up very small batches rather than a full pump. Eventually, it got to the point where it was good enough. So I cut it off and turned around and finished the bottom. So I'm really happy with how it turned out, flaws included. When I do this again, and I will do this again, I'm going to have to leave bigger gaps between the pieces so that the epoxy can flow better in between them. And I think if that first pour hadn't gone so poorly, a lot of those voids would not have happened.